India's road safety was in crisis and it affected. Maybe the three who were gone were alive today because they could have been recovered from where they fell. As India observed Road Safety Week, the campaign gained momentum. Influential voices, school children and concerned citizens all joined in. Taking and it's important for you to, to be associated with this campaign. What is the essential reason why you chose to be on board? Well, I think uh, this has been a growing concern, as we say, and being a young mother, you know, our children uh, walk on the roads, they go to bus stops, you know, to catch the school bus. And I think uh, even as a mom, you always have that fear, you know, that, you know, your child and maybe a mother or a father or a caretaker might be dropping them. But what if somebody is, you know, driving or they're coming back from school and being irresponsible? So I think it's very important that, of course, that don't drink and drive, but also, like you say, you have to drive safely and responsibly even during the day. Uh, Abanti, you've got uh, teenage sons. They're, what, 18 years old. Um, in, in, in driving this, this entire campaign uh, in association with NDTV, your thoughts would at one level have been also on, 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 your, on your young sons. Uh, as a mother, what does this campaign mean to you? I think as a mother, this campaign means I can go home a little bit more reassured that there is a message out there um, very frequently during the season when, when my kids are listening to it, and hopefully, you know, there is an awareness that's being created about them of what not to do. I mean, they are below legal drinking age today, but still, there is temptation always when they are together with friends, etc. So, it just helps me really go uh, and, and feel like there is somebody out there watching out for them through yeah. this program. Yeah. Karishma, I must ask you, um, you know, all of us like to go out, meet friends, party. And then, you know, I mean, to say party responsibly or drink responsibly at one level is cliched, but it is uh, at another level of fundamental truth. Where do you draw the line? Well, you know, I must say that, uh, frankly, I always have a designated driver. Uh, I don't drive myself because I think I have too many things on my mind. So it's better that I sit behind the, the, uh, uh, in the back seat. But I'd like to tell you that there are a lot of young people out there today who have realized this. And I think this campaign has made them realize today when young couples go out to party or to a club to have a few drinks. Like a lot of my friends tell me, you know, we are the driver tonight. Yeah. My friends are like, I'm not drinking tonight. You know, let the husbands and the other friends because I have so many people to drop home. So people have become really, really aware about this. And also I'd like to really... Uh, say that especially in Mumbai, I think the traffic police is doing a great job because over the weekends, a lot of people are genuinely aware and a bit scared that, you know, they cannot afford to drink and drive because they are going to be pulled up. And yeah. there are a lot of check nakas nowadays. Yeah. And I think people, they, the growing concern is out there and people have become really aware. Dr. Vidal is doing a lot of uh, apps now like Party Smart and things like that, drive which a lot of uh, young couples and young people do yeah. use. So I think it is available now, and I'm sure it'll even grow further. So people should be aware that it is available. So it shouldn't be an excuse that, Are, mera driver nahi tha, koi tha nahi to. And I think a lot of young people feel, I'll just have a drink or two and I can handle it. Well, that is not the case. If you are even having one drink, you cannot drive a vehicle, period. What about, uh, but, but again, what about the moderate consumption uh, of, of alcohol? Uh, how, I mean, for those who drink, it's, it's, a, it's obviously a very personal choice. Yes. But then how do you assume that you can drink responsibly? No, that's and, and exactly. Assuming, of course, that you're not driving. So that's out of the question. But then uh, just being responsible as a drinker, I mean, how do you actually figure out where to stop? Well, I think it's from person to person. Like, basically, I mean, I, I don't like alcohol. But uh, there are some people who enjoy a drink, like, every night. So. I think for health reasons also nowadays you hear, you know, people will say, you know, I've had one drink or two drinks. But then there are people who think, you know, they can have 10 drinks and be totally fine, which is unrealistic. See, so the there is no really a demarcation. See, the stigmatization should not be of alcohol. It should be of the, irresponsible yeah, behavior. It's the responsibility. China. I think the responsibility quotient in public at large. Are we responsible? Are we going to take onus? If you go out and drink, are you going to take care of yourselves? And another good thing is, gone are the days when you think you can just bribe the cop. Yes. Because now, 
it's impossible for you to be even doing that. And you the have kind changed. of <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that comment, Sohail. But I think more importantly, nice uh, the fines have been raised. I mean, almost tenfold. Yeah. So somebody who's going to be irresponsible also realizes that there's a huge price to pay. So I think as a society, if we talk about responsibility rather than getting into sermonizing that you must, must not drink or you must drink, but about the importance of not drinking and driving. And that's why I'd like to compliment NDTV because you all are one of the few co channels that have a collective conscience to talk about these issues yeah. rather than who said what and who did what. Yeah. See, many years ago in New York, <clears throat> there's a campaign which was run by young people which basically talked about peer respect, peer approval, and peer disapproval. So it wasn't about whether you were drinking too much or drinking less. It was what you were doing after the drinking. You know, if you were irresponsible to drive, if you were irresponsible to, you know, I mean, if you were misbehaving and that kind of stuff. Social shaming is a very important tool. But you've got to figure the contours of social shaming. Here what happens is a lot of machismo is associated with a guy who drinks and drives, thinking, oh, you know, doesn't matter. Hey, Haryana is the Wild West. So, you know, if you actually look at those areas, and if you don't have social shaming, blend it with demonstrable punishment, which is very penal in, in, in purview, you won't be able to solve this problem. And Shaji, where, where is, uh, in fact, you can take that, sir. Where do you believe we need to go as far as uh, better punishments or, or punishments which actually make a point, not just a hundred rupee fine? So, just like Mr. Said said, just a few days ago, our own electrician, who was driving a scooter, was caught by a police constable. And he went and told him, and he phones me that he had only one bottle of beer, and why the constable should catch me? He was talking to me in Marathi. <laughs> so the constable said, Sab Tani Kai Kilam, I say, what he has done, he has taken a beer, and he says only one, and I know he has taken three. I said, I don't know him, so it, I also told him, I don't know him. So he was ashamed. So he was very annoyed, and doesn't come to my house anymore. I said, I don't recognize you because you are drunk. You had a point, Dr. Suspending the driving license for at least three months is the first act that needs to be done. Because nowadays, the metros at least are running to a situation that if my license is suspended, I'm going to have it for three months. And that would deter me from driving. And moreover, I think so means the culture. I should be ashamed of taking away life by my reckless act, something which he has done, something which he has given. I have no moral authority, no any authority to take right. the life away by doing an accident. Okay, well, we are uh, almost completely out of time, but Abanti won uh, in, in, in shaping in, uh, public opinion, in, in get going on the right road, as it were. So I think um, three things, really. The first is that um, we kind of continue to create awareness around new laws and new legislation which have come in. So last year, we did the Good Samaritan. This year, hopefully, if the Motor Vehicles Act comes through from with the parliament, then really creating that awareness. I think that's important. The second is, how do we, you know, uh, make sure that the on-ground momentum uh, is spread to more cities, more people? So, you know, in marketing language, we say broaden the reach of what we are doing. And third is really, how do we bring in more engagement uh, and not just, you know, one-way kind of sermonization? And that's why we thought for this season, we are actually going to move from a negative message like "don't drink and drive," which, which feels like a stick to a rallying cry for a positive action, which is get a designated driver, so that people know, OK, I don't do that, but then what do I do? Mm -hmm. and, and you know, so we make that the mantra, so there is a behavior shift that people can connect to and get engaged with. All right, well, I'd like to thank uh, all of uh, our panelists today for uh, joining us on this. We do have time for questions, uh, which we will take. Um, but it's, it's something that we really feel uh, is a cause that, in NDT, we certainly uh, we attach ourselves very closely to, and it's been a great privilege working with United Spirits on this. This campaign, this partnership is very strong, and we hope it does continue. Uh, we've got young students over here, young professionals over here. We've also got uh, Dr. Suleyma Merchant, the Dean of uh, Sion Hospital, uh, with us. Uh, Dr. Merchant, can you, there you are, sir. Uh, you were supposed to be here with us, and I'm so glad you were able to make it. Um, in fact, I would ask you uh, the same question which I've asked uh, uh, Dr. Oak earlier on the emergency room uh, of a hospital, the first hour, what is the scene that you typically see day after day, year after year, 
of how families are often destroyed because of irresponsible choices being made? I think that's a very good question. And I think before starting, it's nice to have a point of who are we designing roads for, right? We design roads for motor vehicles, for cars and, and, and other vehicles, but we don't design it for pedestrians. And sadly, 50% of the people who are actually dying in road accidents in India are called vulnerable road users, who are not protected by a shell. So they are cyclists, they are pedestrians, they are children. So every, every day, 20 children die in road accidents in India. Yeah. Kids, uh, you know how kids are taken to school and, yeah. and, and got back from school. I think we have to move towards, and there are a lot of cities in the world, third world countries, like Bogota, for example. They're moving towards pedestrian friendly roads. So the right of way should first, right of way should be of the pedestrian, not of the car vehicle. Any other questions? And if you could just be, yes, sir, yes, sir, over there. If you can ask a question, sir, and point out who you want to. Hello. Yeah. Good afternoon to all. This is Raj from Spicy Stars Mobile. I love to. Uh, I like to ask Karishma Kapoor that: uh, Do you think a celebrity can change uh, so, uh, some uh, society? Society can bring a change in society. Well, I think a celebrity can always uh, bring out the awareness, and I think like uh, Virat is also part yeah. of this campaign. I was there in 2014 in Bangalore. So I think we can, uh, you know, influence uh, the people, the youth, uh, everyone out there. So I think it can make a change. And we do try in our own way to do that. 